All right, everyone, welcome back to your favorite cooking channel. I am Chef Luke. What we're going to talk about today is last year, us on this channel, we, create, we created a website called Base.Cooking. Now, it was kind of a proof of concept because the, the reality is many recipe sites out there, they are so terrible, like there's just all, this, uh, all these ads, all these trackers, all uh, just poorly written sites, a bunch of terrible things. So I just wanted a nice and clear and easy site where you just basically, I mean, you have recipes, that's how it works. You want a recipe, you can click on it, you can read it, it doesn't take a million hours to load. Uh, very nice site. Um, so I, we created this really as a kind of a proof of concept that you can like do this kind of stuff. Um, and of course, many people have submitted recipes, you can check them out. Now, I, st I, I basically, when I created the site, I had a lot of people submit recipes, it's probably around 250 um, recipes here. But eventually I got tired of maintaining it because I was using this really crappy static site generator, okay? Because the whole point of the site, let's not have a stupid dynamic site. Uh, but I, I naively re relied on this kind of hobbled together static site generator. Recently, I have switched it over to using Hugo. Now, Hugo, if you do not know, it is a static site generator written in Go, and I am now a firm proponent of it. I've actually used it, I mean, off and on for doing something for someone else, like for the past five years or so. But it was only now that I seriously got into it, like really got into it. I mean, I, I think I made some people some websites like five years ago that were like, one or two pages. But the nice thing about Hugo, specifically for a site like Based Out Cooking, is if you wanna order things by like tags, like uh, all that kind of stuff, um, tagging basically comes with by default and it's it's easy to work with it. So you can easily sort things up. Uh, let's say I want a French dish, you can do this. Um, and uh, Hugo has many different ways, like when you're in, well, in the implementation of Base Cooking, you can either search the tags individually or on each of the uh, recipes. If you go to the bottom, it'll have other related, you know, articles or I, I guess the tags that it's tagged with. So you can look for similar things. Um, so that is one thing that I wanted. But I also made other changes to Base Cooking. Um, specifically, you see this very nice search bar at the top. Okay, so the point of that, now this actually, <gasps> It's actually JavaScript, but it's like something like five or ten lines, basically, of JavaScript done right. Like, they're, they're, I'm not, like, in general, I'm against JavaScript because what people do is they write entire websites in it because they don't know, I don't know, they don't know how to use responsive CSS or, like, other basic, or they don't know how to use aesthetics. I don't know what exactly, what compels people to use JavaScript, but this is the proper use of it, okay? So what this does now, obviously, look at all these articles. It's hard to, like, make sense of them, like, look through, you really have to have an autistic brain to make sense of all the stuff. So what you can now do is just type in, oh, you know, I'm going to make something with beef. Okay, so beef. And so now I have a bunch of different choices for what to click on, um, that kind of stuff. Or let's say I want, I don't know, chicken, you know, whatever. And it will basically, I mean, it, th what the JavaScript actually does is it just takes the content that is in this list here and filters it by the word you have. Um, and it, it's not using databases or any, I mean, it's, it's not like a backend thing. It is just like filtering the, the list right in front of you. And it, it is not, you're not calling in any external JavaScript bootstrapping garbage or whatever. Um, the, the nice little hack I did here though, actually I should say, so you'll notice if I put in beef, okay? So there are a lot of things with beef in the title, but there are a bunch of stuff that have beef in it, but they're not in the title. Ooh, how do you do that? Well, it's actually very easy with Hugo because in Hugo, you know, when you have, when Hugo is auto-generating, you know, this uh, this list of articles or whatever, you can actually have it secretly put in what it's tagged with. So what I have here is by each article, I have a non-displaying list of their tags. So you, when you're searching in here, you're actually searching by both title and tag, but you're not you're not calling any other, uh, you, you know, you're not loading any other pages or anything like that. It is just right here. It's easy for the ser on the server side and it's easy on your browser, right? Um, so that's the whole point, like, again, like, um, so the point is not like being totally anti-JavaScript, it's like using it for a, a purpose, like this is the appropriate use of it, that's as far as I'm concerned. Um, so either way, so this site, this is just kind of an announcement that I'm now using this site again, it's much easier for me to add stuff, and Hugo actually even makes, let me, uh, let's find, let me just click on something random until I find it. 
Another thing that I had trouble with when I first started having people send stuff in is... Uh, ooh, I think my internet conked out for a second. Okay, there it goes. Um, is when people... At the bottom, I let people... Oh, this guy has a lot of images. Um, I let people put, like, links to their own website or links to cryptocurrency donation addresses. So if, pe if you like the recipe, if you like this guy's, you know, uh, ravioli recipe, you can send a Monero down here. Um, now, the nice thing about Hugo is you can, like, have all... But what people originally did is they would just, like, make their own... They would format every single one differently. They would format... You know, Billy would format his differently from Johnny, who did it on another article, and it would just be a mess. But the nice thing with Hugo, actually, I can probably uh, show you how that works, um, is if we go to, what is it, data? Uh, oh, where's my face? You don't, you don't want to forget that I'm here. Um, you know, I think I have one for myself. Yeah, so instead what you do is you can just have a little JSON file where you have some metadata about each author. And then on in the metadata of each article, you just say, oh, this is the guy who made this uh, particular uh, thing here. You put the author name. This corresponds to a JSON file. And it automatically gets, if they have a website, it'll put a link to their website. If, you ha if they have a Bitcoin or Monero donation address, it'll have all that kind of stuff. So... Um, and I think I might do more of that in the future, like I think maybe prep time and cooking time and serving time. Like just putting a couple more things in metadata. Because um, since you're just generating the site in a static site generator, it doesn't make... I mean, it, it just make It loads instantly for these people. It's not like we're, you know, every single page the server is generating something new. It's still a static site. Um, but you can, Hugo is just so nice in the kind of abstraction, like you can do more scripting kind of things and it will compile into a static site, right? So as I, again, as I said, like I've kind of used Hugo off and on for a while, um, but it's only now that I might be doing videos on it in particular, just because I've found it so useful, um, or, or like writing short codes to, you know, abbreviate things. Um, so I, I might do a little video on that, but in the meantime, this is just to talk about base dot cooking. Um, if you want to add um, uh, a recipe or something like that, you can go to the GitHub, which I think, uh, well, actually, I think I pulled it up here, right? It's linked on the site, though, if you go down to the bottom. Um, so there you can create a pull request or you can fix up other recipes. Or another thing is, like, I kind of like all the recipes out here to eventually have, you know, a picture for each one. So, I mean, some of them do, right? I think this one, yeah. So this one has a, a picture, but a lot of them don't. So it would be nice if you make one of these to supply a picture or something like that. So either way, that's that's about it. Um, I'm, I'm really loving Hugo. I recommend it. Uh, I might be doing a couple videos just on basic things. Uh, it's a little hard to get started in it because uh, they don't really give you sensible defaults. You kind of have to figure out their way of doing things. Uh, but I very much enjoyed it. And it's actually made this side a lot easier. That's why I, that is why I actually fixed all this stuff up. I mean, uh, just because once I learned Hugo, it's like so much easier to maintain the site. And again, the same is with my own personal website, which again is now on Hugo. But I'm probably going to tweak that a little more. I, I've, I, you know, never in the whole, all my years of having a website, have I ever liked how my website looks. You know what I mean? Like I will change it a lot. I've just never really... I've never really felt it, but um, you know that's just my that's my personal problem. So I'll figure that out. That's for me to figure out. Uh, but uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Check out Base Dog Cooking. Ch cook some of the recipes. Take some pictures. Send them in, or su supply your own recipes. Amend these recipes if you want. You can make changes. That's fine. Uh, if you have some, some suggestions. Now that I'm actually thinking about this site more seriously, I want to kind of fix some things up and and make things more consistent, uh, just because originally it was just like, oh, just submit a recipe. Oh, that sounds okay. I'll accept it. Um, all right. So that's it. See you guys next time.